Craig, and we see a nominal descent rate on four healthy mains. Copy, 1,000 meters. This is the sound of a historic moment to the UAE and space history. It is when Emirati astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi returned to Earth. He is the first Arab to serve on the International Space Station for a six month mission, the first Arab to perform a spacewalk, and one of the first two astronauts from the UAE, along with Hassan Al Mansouri. Dr. Al Nayadi joined a very select group of people, becoming one of only 270 people from 21 different countries to have visited the International Space Station. His stint in orbit was a milestone for the UAE too, and a symbol of the country's ambitions in the realm of science and exploration. So what does this mean for the future of the UAE? And what's next for Arab space exploration? This is Beyond the Headlines, and I'm your host, Sarvat Nasser. In this episode, we'll dissect just what such missions mean for the UAE and what kind of legacy Dr. El Nayadi will have. We are delighted to be joined by New York University Abu Dhabi astrophysicist Dimitra Atri. But before we start, if you want to get all of the latest episodes as soon as they come out, then just hit the subscribe button wherever you listen to your podcasts. Dr. Sultan Al Nayadi's return to Earth on 4th September and his achievements on board the ISS were celebrated in the UAE. Welcoming the astronaut back, President Sheikh Mohammed wrote on X, previously known as Twitter, Together with the national work teams, you made a historic Emirati achievement and contributed to the service of science and humanity. With all of you, our ambitions in the field of space are great and continuous. Listen to that moment that Dr. Al Nayadi left the Dragon Endeavor after 186 days on board as narrated by the NASA live feed commentators. Last remaining crew member inside Dragon Endeavor now is Emirati astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi, completing 186 days in space. And just like that, the fourth crew member, one hour exactly on the nose since splashdown, um, has now egressed from Dragon Endeavor. It's like smiles and waves and applause all around. We're joined today by Dr. Dimitra Atri, who is the principal investigator of the Aspire Award for Research Excellence grant to study the atmosphere of Mars with the UAE's HOPE mission. His group is also investigating how Mars lost most of its atmosphere and the possibility of finding extinct or extant life on the planet. The data collected by space mission undertaken by Dr. El Nayadi could directly one day contribute to the studies of Dr. Autry. And so who is better to comment on the success on the mission and how it will inspire the future of the UE space travel than the astrophysicist? So can you give us a bit of an idea of what Dr. El Nayadi is doing now, and um, now that he's landed back on Earth, and what formalities will he have to go through? Yeah, so after spending six months in space uh, in microgravity, it takes a toll on the human body. The muscle loss is very rapid. The bone density loss is rapid. Plus all the organs, they have to adapt to microgravity. And so their functioning changes. Even the fluids within the body, they change. So if you look at Dr. Al Nayadi's face now, over a period of time, it has changed. And that is, you know, something that you can just see from photographs. But there are, uh, there is a team of professionals at NASA, Johnson Space Center. They are specialized in this. And so Al Nayadi will now undergo treatment. He is going to slowly recover. His body is going to slowly recover to gravity. He's, he has to learn to walk again <laughs> because as you might have seen from the footage, he uh, is not able to sit or walk right after landing. But slowly he's, he will do everything. And so it's a slow process and it teaches us a lot about how the human body is going to adapt in different gravity conditions. And eventually when astronauts will spend uh, more time on the moon or on Mars, these studies are going to help us with that. Dr. Al Nayadi carried out more than 200 science experiments aboard the orbiting outpost, including ones assigned by NASA and ones assigned by universities across the UAE. How will his studies one day directly benefit the research that you are carrying out at the New York University in Abu Dhabi? Yeah, so we have a space program which is focused on planetary science, 
it is focused on human space exploration specifically sustainable sustainable human exploration and if you see if you look at the time uh, that we are living in right now uh, we are living in a time where uh, humans are thinking about establishing permanent bases on the moon in the very near term this is going to happen within the next 5 to 10 years and then uh, in the next 20 to 30 years establishing permanent bases on mars and so all the studies that are done at the international space station they act as a stepping stone towards that objective and so this mission should be looked from that point of view now there are many experiments that the astronauts including dr alniadi did on board the international space station uh, some of them re- were related to uh, how different materials behave in extreme conditions and we need that information not only for future space missions but then we can apply those techniques here on earth to improve manufacturing for example so uae has a new industry uae has a new space industry which is now uh, going to grow rapidly why not use those technologies here from the right from the beginning and to have very efficient manufacturing processes uh, things like that uh, there are some experiments so um, i would like to talk about three experiments which captured my attention so my favorite one was proposed by a high schooler so a high school student had an experiment where um, basically there are parts uh, that protect chromosomes these are small capping units and uh, if these capping units shrink they cause damage uh, to the cells they cause aging they can also cause cancer but when you go in space uh, the opposite happens these units expand these are called telomeres and so the student devised a method to measure these telomeres and uh, once we understand that well we can then apply these things back to the earth and this can help us uh, reduce the impact of aging reduce the impact of cancer and so on so this is one of uh, my favorite experiments another one was growing uh, crystals in space uh, so here in our lab we also grow crystals and uh, they obviously grow in the presence of gravity but in microgravity the quality is just amazing they they are really beautiful and so there are a number of drug companies who are looking at uh, growing uh, these drugs uh, in crystal form and then they will be able to inject in the human body in a very efficient way uh, this is one of the experiments and uh, there are many more i can just go on and on <laughs> It's interesting you mentioned uh, you know the high school student who did the telomere um study because I think that was also uh, observed in NASA astronaut Scott Kelly who spent about 340 350 days there consecutively and they found that he had actually gotten taller and his heart shrank by 25% but I think those are more permanent side effects of being in microgravity conditions and do you, would you want to say anything about the farming that he did as well because you mentioned agencies are trying to establish long term uh, bases on the moon and beyond how do you think taking part in farming experiments up in space would help uh, people here on earth and for deep space missions in the future cuz dr el nayadi did harvest baby tomatoes for example gave a tour of the onboard nursery and harvested some other kind of leaves as well Yes, yeah, so on board the International Space Station, you are living in an environment with very limited resources and in a very controlled environment. And if you are able to grow things there, then it is great because we can then use things, techniques that we learn from there, and apply them to places here on Earth where resources are not suitable for farming. For example, the UAE. Uh, so these techniques then show us how what is the most effective way to farm different uh, vegetables even uh, growing meat in space is also one of the things that people are working on and uh, more research in this area will uh, help countries like the UAE to become self sustainable to have its own uh, farming and meat growing industry 
I think astrophysicists, especially those, uh, you know, planetary scientists who study Mars would probably be working more closely with the um, astronaut uh, o- astronaut program offices, you know, as agencies look to send uh, humans to to the moon and beyond, especially Mars. What kind of work do you think um, planetary scientists such as yourself will be doing once agencies are able to send humans to Mars? Yeah, so one of the biggest questions that humanity has not been able to solve is the origin of life. How did, you know, dirt and rocks turn into beautiful things such as life? We don't know that. And so this is the biggest challenge that we face. And we think that Mars is one of the places where life would have originated. Mars is also a planet which is still in its pristine state. Uh, When life originated around 4 billion years ago on Earth, because of so much erosion, because Earth is such a dynamic planet, you don't see those places now. They have all been eroded. But those places still exist on Mars. You can see them on orbit. So the first thing is these astronauts to go there and explore. Uh, On the surface, the conditions are extreme. Uh, The pressure is extremely low. The temperature is low. The radiation levels are extremely high. But if you go slightly below the surface, a meter or so, Temperatures are moderate. Uh, Mars has uh, things called brines. So these are salty solutions. They are able to uh, stay in liquid form even at minus 10, minus 15 degrees Celsius. And so those are places where life could still exist. And maybe we can find signs of origin of life there. So this is one of the biggest things. So astronauts are going to go there and explore it. And that is my biggest motivation. Are you excited about the NASA's Perseverance mission potentially bringing back Mars samples for the first time? Yeah, so Perseverance for more than a year now has been collecting samples and storing in these tubes. And the NASA is a joint Mars sample return mission. Uh, It is scheduled to fly in 2031, uh, land on Mars, collect all those tubes and bring them back by 2033. Uh, It's a very ambitious mission. Uh, It is costing a lot more than what NASA originally thought. So that is another issue now, how to deal with that. But once the samples come back, then we are going to definitely learn so much more about Mars because uh, uh, the kind of equipment that you can take uh, in space, they have to be really small and with limited capability. But when you bring back those samples here in our lab, then we can do so much more. Uh, Unfortunately, these samples are only from the surface. And so they have already been exposed to this radiation, this uh, low temperature. So finding any signs of life is very small. But still, uh, they will tell us a lot about the history of Mars and just the geology of Mars. But I'm more excited about the European mission, ExoMars, uh, which was supposed to, in the last five years, it has been cancelled many times. And now in 2028, it is scheduled to fly. And it has a drill, which is uh, capable of drilling two meters deep. And it was also in Dubai Expo, there was a replica of that drill. And that is a perfect instrument to look for science of life. So I'm excited about that. And maybe in future, near future, we'll have a sample return mission where they will bring samples from below the surface. I'm looking forward to it. We should send a UAE astronaut there to do that daring task. Yes. And in summer, we are all living on Mars, right? So why not? (laughs) (laughs) Do you think Elon Musk's starship would uh, go to Mars by the time they make that return mission possible? It could be. We don't know because with technology, you never know. There are breakthroughs. So if this new rocket is successful, then definitely it can go to Mars. Uh, Landing on Mars and bringing the astronauts back is another issue. And that technology will take some time. But at least we can go uh, into orbit around Mars and bring back the astronauts. We now have four astronauts who represent the UAE, as well as Dr. Al Nayadi and Hazal Mansouri. We also have Nur al Machushi, the first Emirati woman to be selected as an astronaut, and Mohammed al Mullah, who are currently training at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. 
How long is this training, and when can we expect to see them taking on a similar mission to what we've seen? Yeah, so we don't know when the next mission is going to be. It will be announced by the UAE government, by the MBRSC, who lead the UAE astronaut program. But the training uh, depends on what kind of mission it is. If this mission is going to be similar to this Crew 6 mission, where Dr. Alnyandi went to space, then it is going to be one, one and a half year at least training. If it is something else, then it could take longer. For example, NASA is now preparing astronauts for uh, missions to the moon. And that training is obviously uh, much longer. And uh, UAE has already signed the Artemis Accords, which are US-led uh, rules for uh, cooperations in the space sector for sustainable exploration of space. And um, UAE already has a collaboration with the U.S. in the space sector. So maybe uh, one day UAE's own astronauts will go to the moon. And uh, Dr. Alniadi, after coming back, first thing he said, OK, I'm ready for the next mission. So maybe he'll go to the moon next. Well, the ISS will eventually retire anyway. So where do you think the UAE's astronaut program will head uh, when you consider commercial space stations that are being planned to build in low Earth orbit, as well as possibly even joining NASA's Artemis program? Yeah, so right now, in addition to the International Space Station, China has its own space station, and they are also planning to expand it and have other countries also install modules there and uh, take their astronauts there. There are private companies such as Blue Origin and others who are now thinking about replacing the space station with newer facilities. NASA has this program. The first part of uh, NASA's Artemis program is to have a space station around the moon. And uh, most of the effort is going towards that. So maybe uh, UAE's astronauts will spend time orbiting the moon. And for the future astronauts from the Middle East, what would be your message to the space explorers of tomorrow? Uh, this is a perfect time to be here. So, for example, when I was in the U.S., I was in a NASA committee, and this was, I think, in 2014 or 2015. I was talking to one of my colleagues, and he said, oh, from here, he's flying to Dubai for a secret Mars mission. And I didn't believe him. I thought he was just joking and see where I am now. Uh, and so within a few years, this place has completely changed. Uh, nobody nobody uh, knew about UAE as something to uh, a country with, which is doing something with space. So now with the success of the HOPE mission, the upcoming asteroid belt mission, uh, then these two astronaut missions, especially with Dr. al spending six months and his outreach program, A Call in Space, and his other videos, they have been watched by people all over the globe. And uh, even yesterday, just last night, I was giving a guest lecture at Columbia University. And um, so I was talking to these students and they knew about this. And so this is a very exciting time to be in this. Uh, I would encourage students to study STEM disciplines and uh, enroll in NYUAD and other institutions here and then get involved in uh, some kind of space activity even as a high school student, there are many internships available. Uh, we offer internships for undergraduate students. They can come work with us, and then they can either pursue research here, working on one of the UAE's missions, or go abroad, or it's up to them. Why do you think the UAE is putting so much focus on space? Yeah, so UAE has a diversification strategy where uh, primarily UAE used to be an oil-based economy, and now UAE is modernizing its economy at a rapid pace. And so space acts as a catalyst to expand, to accelerate that effort. Um, when UAE invests in space, it invests in uh, high-end technologies, which are then going to establish those industries here. These industries are going to grow and it is going to result in the growth of the economy. Also, from the point of view of young kids and the youth, having a space program is uh, very inspirational. And I am talking from my personal experience. Um, 
as a kid growing up in india we had an astronaut who went to the space station on board a russian rocket and that was such a huge symbol for me that okay you know someone who looks like me can go into space so i can also do anything so this is a great thing for people here and uh, hopefully with uh, the first uh, women astronaut from the uae going into space it will be great for all the young girls in the region to pursue careers in stem disciplines and do you think with all of the achievements the uae is doing in space will it help inspire other arab countries in the region to pursue more work in in space exploration you can already see the effect that uae has now developed a very successful model of uh, space exploration by partnering with other countries and by having these partnerships these missions which generally take 10 to 15 years in other countries they can be done on a really short time scale and other countries in the region uh, will definitely follow the same model and uh, establish their own space programs one example is azerbaijan has its own azer cosmos and they are hosting the international astronomical congress uh, in october and uh, this was unthinkable a few years ago but now other countries are going to follow and in this region you'll see a lot of effort in the space sector thanks so much for taking the time out to talk to us dr dimitra i really appreciate your time with the safe return of dr alniyadi from space the legacy of his mission remains to be seen what we can be sure of is that his place in aerospace exploration history is secure this episode of beyond the headlines was produced by phil green arthur edison and dua farid I'm your host Sarwat Nasser. Thank you for listening. Remember to subscribe or follow us on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with others who might benefit from this conversation.